Welcome to this edition of the First Aid Show. Now, we had an email in recently about saying that AED units are all very well, but what happens when they don't work? So what we're going to look at on this episode is the sorts of problems that can happen with AED units and what you do if they don't work. Now generally speaking, all AED units are very, very reliable. There's not a lot that can go wrong with them. They're sealed units, they're kept and stored in a dry, a damp, a damp free place away from dust. They shouldn't be being dropped, so there's not really a lot of reason for them to be damaged, but it may well be that you go to use an AED unit and something goes wrong. It may well be when you start and you turn it on, just no power. Uh, the unit is not functioning, uh, maybe the battery warning alarms are there, but the unit has no power at all. Now, if the unit just doesn't work, all you can really do is carry on CPR in the hope that you can carry on until the emergency services get there. So if there's any major fails with the units, then just keep going, keep going with the CPR until the emergency services arrive. If you've got a low battery indicator, again, don't worry too much. It may well be there's still enough power to uh, deliver the shocks. The units, uh, when the low battery alarm comes on, they still do have a fair amount of power left in them, so they can still deliver shocks. So just because you see a low battery alarm, still go through the process, put the AED unit on, uh, turn the unit on, run through the prompts, and hopefully there's enough power in the unit to deliver the shocks. Um, if you do start and it packs up halfway through, then again, carry on CPR if needed. Now the units also have other warnings. One may well be uh, motion detected. What can happen is, Supposing you were using one of these units on a boat or something with a lot of background noise, occasionally the engines or what's causing the interference can interfere with the detection process. So you may get a motion alert. Now this can be a visual display on the life pack. It's got a visual display. Others have audio displays. What this does is it will detect that there's motion and it will tell you to stop the motion because it's interfering with the detection process. So all you do then is find out what the problem is turn that engine off or whatever's causing the interference and then let it go through the main process again. Other problems with the unit could be that there's a, a serious mechanical fault within the unit itself or electrical fault. Uh, if that indication but normally has an indication like a, a spanner or it needs servicing or the unit will beep like a smoke alarm would so every few minutes you get this beeping noise. Again this doesn't always mean that the unit won't work but just go through the process if you can. Problems can also be with the pads. It may be that you get the, to use the unit and you see the pads and you find out they're out of date. Now, when pads are out of date, they can still be used in most cases. The problem is, is as the pads get older, the glue isn't quite so good. So if it's all you've got, give it a try. Use the pads and hopefully they'll work okay. The units can also give you an indication to say that the pads are not on properly. If that's the case, then push the pads on more. Don't peel them off and then put them back on again because you'll get a lot more skin build up on the pad itself. So just leave the pads and push them in place. So that'd be something like a warning which says, um, you know, check pads for placement. So have a look how they, the actual connections are. Now, otherwise, just look around. If you do have any errors or problems with the units, start with the basics. Make sure it's turned on. Make sure the plugs are in place. Make sure you're following the voice prompts correctly and also have a look, particularly if you're not familiar with the unit, to see if there are any warning signs on there. 